Welcome back to this week's uh, news show, is what I guess this thing is. And this week we're just going to be talking Commander and a little bit of M12. Uh, once again, Wizards really does control the flow of information because out of nowhere we have all of these really cool cards coming out. And there's a lot to say about them, so I only picked the cards that I, seen, I thought were the most interesting to talk about because there's a lot of them. I don't want to bore you guys or ramble on, so let's just jump right into it. Anamar, Soul of Elements, pretty interesting guy. Um, you won't mind recasting him a couple of times in the game, maybe uh, two or three times maximum, because he's uh, he's, he's interesting. I mean, he's pro white and black, so you're not, he's not going to get Doom Blamed or um, Dark Banishing, and he's not going to get Oblivion Ringed or Drained of Nowhere, so that pretty much leaves Burn to kill him, and he's very killable with Burn. Uh, I have no problem running this guy as a general. He should be lots of fun. I'm, I think they did good with this guy. Animar's Soul of Elements, uh, legendary creature, Elemental. That's cool by itself as well. And of course, he's at the Mythic Rarity. Teriel, Reckoner of Souls. Uh, the really bad part about this guy is he chooses the creature at random. And I'm sure in great big multiplayer games, you're going to be going for that one creature that is going to win you the game or it's going to put you in a tremendous winning position. And if you were able to get that creature every single time, you'd be kind of unstoppable, which is like the main idea, but we're not talking Arch Enemy here, we're talking Commander. Uh, a 7 casting costs 4 7 Flying Vigilance, Legendary Creature Angel with the Mythic Rarity. Uh, it's it's cool. It reminds me a lot of the Razia Boros Archangel, which costs 8 for a 6 3 Flying Vigilance and Haste. So I, I like the amount of abilities we have on Terio. It's really strange as an angel. I would think it's more like uh, angel horror like we saw back in uh, Odyssey where if you reach threshold it got like plus four plus four became black and gained the horror creature type. I, I was, I'm thinking something like that would be more suiting. But I'm I'm interested by it. The ability is kind of um, not so exciting but random air strategies in multiplayer definitely need a fun outlet and I think that's a fun outlet so yeah I'm eager to see how it does in multiplayer. Ruhan of the Fomari, a 4 cast that costs 7 7 giant warrior at the mythic rarity. Of course it's legendary. Costs 1 red, white, and blue at the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose an opponent at random. Ruhan of the Fomari attack, attacks that player this combat if able. Templating is kind of a, a word, a, a tongue twister. Um, the artwork is awesome. We've seen this guy before, Raymond Swanland. He does really amazing work. My only problem with the card, other than that it's not funny enough, we need more random effects, is this guy definitely needs to be a Minotaur Giant. Um, I don't think we need the Class Warrior in there, but we never know what they're going to do with creature types in the future. So I guess Giant is a creature type and Warrior is more like a subclass. Not the point. point is I like this guy. He's awesome as a 4 4 7, seven. And outside commander, I think he's gonna be really fun too. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited about this guy. Wish he was a minotaur though. Kalia of the Vast, a four casting cost two two legendary human, a mythic rarity with flying. Whenever Kalia of the Vast attacks an opponent, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking that opponent. Um, the artwork is kind of misleading. I thought we we're getting another angel, but. Or not. It's a cleric. Not sure how this works out with the artwork, but it's it's cool looking. We'll leave it at that. Um, changelings, I think, is going to be the most fun with this guy because I just want to play this guy and just take off all these little tiny changelings. Like, ah, they're dragons and angels and demons and minotaurs and fish. Ha ha! You can... It's going to be a little ridiculous. <laughs> it, it definitely helps that player who just wants to play the great big dragons and angels and demons. It's definitely going to help that player have a lot of fun. And those players need a fun outlet, so I'm excited about it. He's very killable. Casting cost definitely helps, though, on late game, so he doesn't cost too much to keep recasting. I like it. Let's give those uh, casual players more casual, fun stuff. Hopefully, this got tournament quality too. I wonder what we could do with that in a real meta game. Trench Gorger is the coolest Leviathan to come along in a while, and it even looks really cool. Uh, eight casting cost six six trampling Leviathan. Not legendary, it's just that they're uh, rarity of rare. Uh, Trampo, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of land cards, exile them, then shuffle your library. If you do, Trench Gorger's Power and Toughness each become equal to the number of cards exiled this way. So, 
if you search out for lands, you have to move, move at least six to break even. Let's, that's not what he's here for. He's here for one thing. Everyone hates drawing lands late game, even early game, if you're getting land flooded. Let's cut that out. Let's let's not go off a of mana severance combo or anything. Let's just play a big fat dude that gets fatter and eliminates those dead draws late game. He makes Leviathans interesting again. Not saying the ones we had were terribly boring. They definitely need a cool creature, and this is it. I wholeheartedly approve. The artwork for this image shows a T-Rex for an arm, um, dead dinos in the stomach, huge goopy looking body here with like strange little arm things popping out, um, a spooky like owl head with tons of bony features all over his. This guy just looks really awesome looking. I could not wait to see um, what this card was for. I was really hoping it was a general and uh, we, we get our wish on that. So the Minoplasm is a 5 casting cost, 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, enters the battlefield, may exile two creature cards from graveyards. If you do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of those cards with a number of additional plus one plus one cards on it equal to the power of the other card. So just for example, you remove your own Acroma Angel of Wrath and you just so happen to hit the Phyrexian Dreadnought on the other side of the table. Now you have an 18-18 Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Pro Black and Red, Ooze Rific card. That's just one possible outcome. I'm, I'm just going to think of like a crazy um, graveyard combo deck that just dumps huge black and blue green fatties into your graveyard as fast as it can so when you cast this guy you have a monster and once the other monsters come out to play on your opponent's side and he dies he's coming back as another monster that just sounds so cool I'm so glad they made it I think there's a templating issue between shape-shifting and oozing at the moment but I'll leave it in Wizards very capable hands to determine what shape-shifting will be in the future versus what oozes are going to do in the future. Just a side note. Damia Sage of Stone. Pretty interesting card here. It's almost like an enchantment that is really good in combat. Um, if you give it a power and toughness boost, uh, even if it's just plus zero plus two or plus two plus two, you should definitely have a good size general right there. He needs protection though, most definitely. Death Touch really helps. Most interesting about this card, other than its very low power and toughness and high casting cost, is the fact that it's a Gorgon Wizard. Gorgons in the past have not been very interesting at all. The most interesting being um, Mass Gorgon, which didn't make a lot of sense art-wise or even flavor-wise, except for the fact that it's in Judgment and you need to give Gorgons, because there are so many of them protection, or green and white creatures protection from them. Probably because of Onslaught's whole tribal theme and shape-shifting but regardless of Sisters of Stone Death and Viscera of the Dreadful being the other two notable ones the remaining two are not interesting at all um, I would like to see more Gorgons in the game that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna say about this card I'm, I think it's gonna be interesting it's not gonna see a lot of play I don't think because it's kinda narrow but definitely drawing seven when you have zero every turn is going to be amazing so maybe I'm dead wrong on this I hope I am because artwork that cool definitely needs to be played um, in other news though I think we should have more Gorgons in the game other than the changelings and they might seem like this hidden creature type that you should only see every once in a great while because it's a medusa effect and such but i mean we have tons of death touch stuff already we have it on vampires we have it on scorpions we have it on basilisks and we have like dragons that aren't supposed to be seen everywhere you go and every set's got a dragon in it almost so why not have more gorgons i would love to see a gorgon tribe arise but i want good gorgons that's the point here Wrapping up commander news is Acorn Catapult. I'm really psyched about because it um, it's squirrel rific. Four casting costs, one to activate artifact, one to tap uh, Acorn Catapult. There's one damage to target creature or player. That creature's control or that player puts a 1 1 green squirrel creature token onto the battlefield. So hit one of your um, creatures for one at the end of your turn and you get a guy as long as that creature's got power or toughness uh, higher than one. You'll be getting yourself a squirrel army real fast. It also helps with uh, multiplayer politics because if you need a guy to block with, you just hit a guy that's not going to die because it's just acorns flying at him. And they get an additional blocker. Seems cool to me. I love it. Of course, anything of squirrels I love. Really excited to see this card uh, see print because it's squirrel rific. Quite a bit on uh, M12 coming out that was revealed. Uh, I'm not going to go over the specific commons and uncommons that they said they're doing. We got like Lanowar Elves and Diabolic Tutor coming back. Your traditional corset stuff. 
and here we have um, all five of the intro packs coming out uh, white green blue white and black blue featured um, really can't see what's going on too much with the artwork but it definitely looks like we have a demon as you can see on the far right a sphinx in the middle and an angel on the far left uh, red black and a green red um, we already know the dragon and the spider on the cover if it's rare we really don't see too many rare spiders so I'm really hoping he's interesting but it's a core set and all that stuff is usually pretty boring good for getting into the game bad value wise like 90% of the time at least for me um, yeah intro packs don't excite me but we got the pictures from and that's cool uh, Bloodlord of Vazgoth 5 cast cost 3 3 I believe is the pre-release promo I forget which is which here though uh, Bloodthirst of 3 flying whenever you cast a vampire creature spell it gains Bloodthirst 3 definitely turns your vampire army of weaklings into beefy guys at least a 3-4 so I think he's going to be pretty cool for standard but uh, Garrick Sword is a 7 cast cost 7-7 seven, seven, Trampler uh, play the top card of your library reveal and you may cast the top card of your library if it's a creature card kind of interesting some mana is a lot though maybe there's a combo with it if you cheat into play with like polymorph but I don't see that happening and finally uh, Hunter's Insight to the green for an instant choose target creature you control whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn draw that many cards kind of interesting I like it when green gets card draw I'm very situational but I definitely think if you can cast it once and get through a damage you will more than net yourself your two cards so yeah I think it's good I like it that's gonna do it for this week's show if you have not yet received your prizes from the last giveaway please be patient it does take time for the postal service to deliver things especially for those of us that live out of country um, yeah that's gonna do it uh, stay tuned to your uh, regular scheduled programming on whatever rumor websites you keep track of because there's lots of commander and m12 news coming out all the time so yeah keep uh, track of it and I'll see you guys here next week